So now that we've sort of covered what a graph is and all the different parts of it, I want to talk about a specific type of graph, and this is a tree. Now, trees are special in the sense that they have a few properties about them that make them easier to work with in a lot of ways, and that's why to get started we're going to sort of just use trees for the algorithms we're learning. And then once we get a feel for them, we'll sort of see how these algorithms can be used in other graphs. But I just want to start with the trees because they're much, much easier to work with. So the first thing that makes a tree easier to deal with is that it has a root node. So in other graphs, for example, if I go back to the map, there's no specific city you have to start at. So any algorithm we sort of work with has to keep in mind that you can start anywhere and you might be going anywhere. But when you get to a tree, You've got this root node, and that's pretty much where you're always going to start. You're going to start at this root, and you're going to work your way down the tree. Now, the next thing I just sort of alluded to is the fact that the edges are directed. Now, what this means is that when you start at the root node, you're going to work your way down the tree. And that is why you're almost always going to see tree, trees um, you know, visually represented like this one here, where you've got a root node up top, and then it sort of goes downwards to the leaf nodes. The leaves are, or the leaves are these bottom ones. The, the nodes that have no children are, are typically called leaf nodes. The next thing that I want to mention is hard to sort of show visually, but it stems from the fact that we have a root node and our edges are directed, and they're always directed downwards. So trees will pretty much never have cycles. So this means that they're a directed graph, they are acyclical. And that's where you'll, you'll commonly hear the term DAG, D-A-G, which stands for Directed Acyclical Graph. So trees are pretty much always DAGs because you always have to go downwards and these are always directed edges. So there's no way to go from a 6 up to an 8 in this case because all of our edges go downwards. So this is really handy because when we start working on, um, you know, so different algorithms and stuff like that, DAGs make them much, much easier to work with because you don't have to worry about cycles or preventing them and things like that. You just sort of go through your code and, and you just move forward and you're fine. So these last two properties that I'm going to cover are not always true, but I think they're sort of worth looking at um, just so you can you know, pay attention to them and you sort of get a feel for them. The first is that it's common to see trees that are balanced. So trees by themselves aren't naturally balanced, but there are specific types of trees and data structures that create these trees that we'll learn about later that always helps sort of create a balanced tree. What I mean by a balanced tree is that when you look at any single node, like this eight, the number of children on the left-hand side of that node and the number of children on the right-hand side are roughly equal. Now, in this case, they're exactly equal, but I say roughly because if you had one less child on the right side, they would still be a balanced tree. It's just you can't do half of a node on each side, so you're, you have a little bit of an offset. The last thing that I want to talk about is, again, not something that's always the case, but it's very common to see trees that are in a specific order. Um, this is especially true with like a binary search tree or different trees like that. Trees will have some specific order that is intended to sort of make using them easier. It's one of the reasons why people like using trees so much is once you have them in a specific order and they're balanced, you have this guarantee that you'll only look at log of n items to find what you're looking for, where n is the total number of items in this tree. So in this case, we've got about 15, 16 items. And, you know, as we go down through it, we'll at most have to look at four different items to find what we're looking for. So I'm going to show you why, what the order of this is. Um, you can see here in the bottom left, we've got a 1. Then we move up to a 2. Then we've got a 3. And then we can go up here to this 4. And this entire tree is sorted from lowest item to highest item. The way it's sorted is that at every single node, for example, this eight node, everything stored to the left of that node is smaller than it, or less than it, and everything stored to the right of that node is greater than it. So in this case, you can see everything over here is greater than an eight, and everything over here is less than an eight. Similarly, if we look at the four, everything to the left of it is less than it, and everything to the right of it is greater than a four. So this holds true throughout the entire tree, and what this ends up doing is when we're looking for numbers, we can actually go through and just decide which direction to go at any point in time really easily because we know exactly what to expect. So when we're at this 8, we can actually say, well, if we need a number, let's say we're trying to find a 7. We can say, all right, well, I know 7 is less than an 8, so it has to be on the left-hand side if it's here. So we'll go down to the 4. And while we're looking at the 4, we'll say, all right, well, I'm looking for a 7. It's greater than a 4, so we need to go right. So we go down to the 6. 
And again, the same exact thing. We're looking for a seven. We know that's greater than a six, so we have to go right. And then here we get to the seven. Now, if this wasn't a seven, say this was like a 6.5, um, at this point we could look and say, all right, well, we need to go right. But you know, since there's no children to the right, we could say a seven isn't in this tree. But since we found it, we you know we know we only had to look at a couple different spots to find it. In this case, it was one, two, three, four. So if you look at the log of 15, um, base two at least, it is going to give you four. So four is the most number of things that you're ever going to have to look at in this case. Um, and that's, you know, it's because it's a nice balanced tree and it's sorted.